This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 357. New rarely equals better. And learn whether you win or lose. Both by Ross Enemite of rosstraining.com. And I'm Dr. Neil Malik, your narrator of blogs covering health and fitness. I read to you from some of the most popular blogs out there, with permission from the authors, of course. And today we're lucky to have a sponsor of this episode. It helps keep the podcast running. And that sponsor is Talkspace, the online therapy company that lets you choose from over 1,500 licensed therapists. Get matched with your perfect therapist who can put you on the path to a happier life. For a special offer just for you, visit Talkspace.com OHD. So I have an inspirational quote for you. So lately we've been talking about what happens if you succeed? What happens if you fail? How can you push through that? So today's inspirational quote reflects that very nicely. Quote, real heroes are men and women who fall and fail and are flawed, but win out in the end because they've stayed true to their ideals and their beliefs and commitments. Kevin Costner. All right, so keep that in mind as we hear today's two posts and as we optimize your life. New rarely equals better by Ross Enemite of rosstraining.com. Earlier this week, I shared a short video of a homemade suspension trainer that I made many years ago. After posting the clip, I was surprised at how many comments and views it received. After all, my suspension trainer is an old piece of equipment that's been featured on my site several times before. The suspension trainer is nothing but an inexpensive pair of cam buckle straps and playground ring handles. It's nothing fancy, but it is still going strong and gets the job done and the fact that it can still attract some attention is refreshing in an industry that always seems to be pushing something new or different. Same, different decade. Although fitness trends seem to change faster than the seasons, my own approach to training has remained fairly constant over the years. Very little has changed. The suspension trainer serves as one of many examples. It worked for me 10 or more years ago and continues to work for me today. Once you find something that works, you don't need to constantly seek out different methods. There's something to be said for consistency with exercises that have been proven useful and stood the test of time. For instance, suspension trainers may have gained popularity in the last 10 to 15 years, but the concept itself is everything but new. 1866 Suspension Training In 1866, there was a book published called Athletic Sports for Boys that featured a homemade suspension trainer. Perhaps I'll sound strange for saying it, but I think it's neat to be working with a device that's similar to what athletes were using 150 years ago. It was challenging then, and it continues to be challenging today. Very little has changed in that regard. Take home lesson. Believe it or not, I'm not writing this entry in hopes that everyone makes or purchases a suspension trainer. Instead, I'm using the tool to highlight the idea that effective forms of exercise are anything but new. And furthermore, when you find an exercise or tool that works, there's no need to abandon it after a few months just because someone said you need variety. As I've said before, adding variety to your routine doesn't mean knocking everything down and starting from scratch. It's possible to remain consistent with exercises that have been proven to be beneficial while including subtle forms of variety to prevent staleness. Don't be fooled. In today's social media-driven world, there's plenty of online personalities who make a living by constantly pumping out new or recycled material. These so-called fitness celebrities often train no one but themselves. As a result, more and more exercises are being invented today than ever before. Thus, it's important to understand that not all exercises have been devised with your well-being in mind. Plenty of movements have been created for no other reason but to satisfy the creator's need to provide new content. When it comes to exercise, though, new rarely equals better. Regardless of your goals, there's plenty of established exercises and routines that have already stood the test of time. And I don't say this to suggest that there won't be times when improvements can be made, but such occasions aren't nearly as common as some would like you to believe. Final thoughts. In summary, when it comes to exercise selection, I'm a big believer in the idea that less can be more. I don't need to perform countless exercises to be healthy and strong. I rarely stray too far from a handful of basic movements and tools that have served me well throughout my life. There's no reason to fix something that isn't broken. So, while my old suspension trainer may seem archaic compared to many of the newer models, it works well for me. I'm not defined by the equipment. Instead, I define myself through the consistent effort that I apply to whatever exercise I perform. 
Hard work does not depend on a particular movement or tool. It's up to the individual and can be applied to almost anything. Learn Whether You Win or Lose by Ross Enemite of rostraining.com. Quote, you're never as good as everyone tells you when you win and you're never as bad as they say when you lose. Lou Holtz. As a coach, I'm not ashamed to admit that I'm not easily impressed. I don't get too excited about most victories. In my eyes, I expect to win if we have trained properly. Therefore, I rarely view a win as a reason to celebrate. Instead, I treat the victory almost the same way as a loss. I closely analyze the performance to determine what we did well and what we did wrong. Afterward, we get right back to work so we can improve whatever needs improving. Always strive to improve. Unfortunately, many athletes fail to capitalize on the opportunity to improve after a victory. They get too wrapped up in their own hype while celebrating temporary success. Embrace victory, then learn. Please note that I am not suggesting that you shouldn't enjoy winning. I am as competitive as anyone, so I certainly embrace each victory we earn. There's no denying that it feels great to win. I simply caution you against allowing the joy of one victory to interfere with another. As I mentioned before, no matter how good you are, you can always get better. Never spend too much time celebrating a victory. Embrace it, enjoy it, and then capitalize on the opportunity to learn from the experience. Don't let it go to waste. Don't fear criticism. Over the years, I've had plenty of athletes who weren't thrilled to hear my analysis of their performance after a victory. Many have joked that I am raining on their parade. What I'm actually doing, though, is providing constructive criticism so that we can benefit from the experience and ultimately improve. As an athlete, I believe it is important to accept constructive criticism. If you aren't willing to identify and or recognize your faults, you'll always struggle to improve them. Therefore, don't surround yourself with people who will only tell you how great you are. Instead, it's important to be around people who tell you the truth, good or bad. That's how you learn. Final thoughts. In summary, to be a great athlete or to be a great anything, it's important that you hold yourself to a high standard. Never celebrate success too hard and stay open to constructive criticism from trusted sources, of course. In all my years of coaching, I've never met an athlete who wasn't capable of improving. There's always something that you can do better. Don't miss out on those opportunities because you're too busy celebrating a victory. By all means, enjoy it, but get back to work so that you continue improving. Never settle. You just listened to the posts titled New Rarely Equals Better and Learn Whether You Win or Lose, both by Ross Enemite of rostraining.com. And a big thanks again to Talkspace for sponsoring this episode. Talkspace, the online therapy company, makes it easy to connect with an experienced, licensed therapist that you pick based on your preferences and for way less than traditional therapy. What's really cool is that you can send your therapist text, audio, and video messages, or even do a live video chat. Talkspace therapists are fully licensed and go through a rigorous screening process. Plus, they've done thousands of hours of supervised professional training. So, to match you with your perfect therapist, go to talkspace.com OHD. And as a special offer just for our listeners, you can use the coupon code OHD to get $30 off your first month, all while showing your support for this podcast. Again, that's the code OHD, and you can use that at talkspace.com slash OHD. The authors of the book Decisive, Chip and Dan Heath, would definitely agree with what Ross mentioned when it comes to learning when you win or lose. In their book, they stated how they simply couldn't understand why people don't take the advice from those that are considered experts in their field. So if given constructive feedback or constructive criticism, let's call it, from an expert, those receiving that criticism or that feedback will become resistant and they'll argue about it and they'll say, nuh-uh, look what I did well. And the author simply couldn't figure out why that is. And so they say it's so important to stay open-minded, to not take it personally when you receive that kind of feedback, especially when it's from an expert, you should be grateful for it. But for me, I know it's hard to take constructive criticism, no matter where it's coming from, who it's coming from, or how it's phrased. I can see right through it. I know they're trying to give me some advice 
and I know that I have that resistant wall that comes up immediately. So I too have been working really hard to not get so defensive when that happens. So if that's you, I totally get it. But I have learned so much by trying to keep that open mind, to not take it personally when I receive that kind of feedback. But again, you have to kind of parse through it. When the feedback comes from reputable sources, awesome. But when it comes from folks that really don't know what they're doing, just disregard, just push those aside. Easier said than done, I know, but with practice, I promise it gets a little easier. All right, that's it for today. I hope you're having a great week. Thank you as always for listening and being a subscriber. I'll be back here tomorrow with a post from regular contributor, JC Dean. So I'll see you there where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalist, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us and remember, your optimal life awaits.